Okay, so this is Horry Henry Robs the Bank, Chapter 2. Moody Margaret School. Pay attention, Susan, shrieked Moody Margaret, or you'll go straight to the head. I am paying attention, said Sour Susan. This is boring, said Horry Henry. I want to play pirates. Silence, said Moody Margaret, whacking her ruler on the table. I want to be the teacher, said Susan. No, said Margaret, I'll be the teacher, said Horrid Henry. He, he'd send the class straight out for playtime and tell them to run for their lives. Are you out of your mind? snapped Margaret. Can I be the teacher? asked Perfect Peter. No, shouted Margaret, Susan and Henry. Why can't I be the head? said Susan sourly. Because, said Margaret. Because why, said Susan. Because I'm the head. But you're the head and the teacher, said Susan. It's not fair. It is too fair, cause. Because you'd make a terrible head, said Margaret. Wouldn't? Would. I think we should take turns being head, said Susan. That, said Margaret, is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. Do you see, Mrs Oddbod, taking turns being head? I don't think so. Margaret's class grumbled mutinously on the carpet inside the secret club tent. Class, I will now take the register, intoned Margaret. Susan, here. Peter, here. Henry, in the toilet. Margaret scowled. We'll try that again, Henry. Flushed away. Last chance, said Margaret severely. Henry, dead. Margaret made a big cross in her register. I will deal with you later. No one made you the big boss, muttered Horrid, Horrid Henry. It's my house and we'll play what I want, said Moody Margaret, and I want to play school, Horrid Henry scowled. Whenever Margaret came to his house, she was the guest and he had to play what she wanted. But whenever Henry went to her house, Margaret was the boss, because it was her house. Ugh. Why, oh why, did we ever live next door to Moody Margaret? Mum had important work to do and needed total peace and quiet, so Henry and Peter had been dumped at Margaret's. Henry had begged to go to Ralph's, but Ralph was visiting his grandparents. Now he was trapped all day with a horrible, moody, old grouch. Wasn't it bad enough being with Miss Battleax all week without having to spend his whole precious Saturday stuck at Margaret's? And even worse, playing school. Come on, let's play pirates, said Henry. I'm Captain Hook, Peter will walk the plank. No, said Margaret, I don't want to, but I'm the guest, protested Henry. So, said Margaret, this is my house. And we play by my rules. Yeah, Henry, said Sour Susan. And I love playing school, said Perfect Peter. It's such fun doing sums. Oh, if only Henry could just go home. I want a good report, Mum had said. Or oh, you won't be going to Dave's bowling party tonight. It's very kind of Margaret and her mum to have you boys over to play. But I don't want to go to Margaret's, howled Henry. I want to stay at home and watch TV. N O spells no, said Mum, and sent him kicking and screaming next door. You can come home at five o'clock to get ready for Dave's party, and not a minute before. Horrid Henry gazed longingly over the wall. His house looked so inviting. There was his bedroom window twinkling at him, and his lonesome telly stuck all by itself in the sitting room, just begging him to come over and switch it on and all his wonderful toys just waiting to be played with. Funny, thought Hen Horrid Henry, his toys seemed so boring when he was in his room, but now that he was trapped at Margaret's, there was so much he longed to do at home. Wait, he could hide out in his fort until five. Yes, then he'd stroll into his house as if he'd been at Margaret's all day. But then Margaret's mum would be sure to call his mum to say what Harry, that Henry had vanished, and Henry would get into trouble. Big, big trouble. Big, big trouble. And he'd be banned from Dave's party trouble. Or he'd pretend to be sick, 
Margaret's mum was such an old fusspot, she'd be sure to send him home immediately. Yippee! He was a genius. This would be easy. A few loud coughs, a few dramatic clutches at his stomach, a dash to the loo, and he'd be straight, straight, sent straight home. And, oops, he'd be put into bed. No party, no pizza, no bowling. And what was the point of pretending to be sick at the weekend? He was trapped. Moody Margaret whacked her ruler on the table. I want everyone to write a story, said Margaret. Write a story? Boy, would Horrid Henry write a story? He seized a piece of paper and a pencil and scribbled away. Who'd like to read their story to the class, said Margaret. I will, said Henry. Once upon a time, there was a moody old grouch named Margaret. Margaret had been born a frog, but an ugly wiz wizard cursed the frog and turned into Margaret. That's enough, Henry, snapped Margaret. Henry ignored her. Ribbit, ribbit, said Margaret Frog. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Everyone in the kingdom tried to get rid of this horrible, croaky, moody monster, but she smelled so awful that no one could get near her. And then one day, a hero named Heroic Henry came, and he held his nose, grabbed the Margaret monster, and hurled it into outer space, where she exploded and was never seen again. The end. Susan giggled. Margaret glared. Fail, said Margaret. Why, said Horrid Henry innocently. Cos, said Margaret, I'm a teacher and I say it was boring. Did you think my story was boring, Peter? demanded Henry. Peter looked nervous. Did you, said Margaret. Well, um, uh, I think mine is better, said Peter. My story is, once upon a time there was a tea towel named Terry. He was a very sad tea towel because he didn't have any dishes to dry. One day he found a lot of wet dishes, swish, swish, swish. They were dry in no time. Yippee, said Terry the tea towel. I wonder when. Boring, shouted Horrid Henry. Excellent, Peter, said Moody Margaret. Much better than Henry's. Susan read out a story about her cat. My cat, Kitty Cat, is a big fat cat. She says meow. One day Kitty Cat met a dog. Meow, said Kitty Cat. Woof, woof, said the dog. Kitty Cat ran away. So did the dog. The end. OK, class, here are your marks, said Margaret. Peter came first. Yay, said Perfect Peter. What, said Susan. My story was better than his. Susan came second. Henry came ninth. How can I be ninth if there are only three people in the class, demanded Horrid Henry. Because that's how bad your story was, said Margaret. Now, I've done some worksheets for you. No talking or there'll be no break. Goody, said Perfect Peter. I love worksheets. Are there lots of hard spelling words to learn? Horrid Henry had had enough. It was time to turn into Heroic Henry and destroy this horrible hag. Henry crumpled up his worksheet and stood up. I've just been pretending to be a student, shouted Henry. In fact, I'm a school inspector and I'm shutting your school down. It's a disgrace. Margaret gasped. You're a moody old grouch and you're a terrible teacher, said the inspector. I am not, said Margaret. She is not, said Susan. Silence when the inspector is speaking. You're the worst teacher I've ever seen. Imagine marking a stupid story about a tea towel higher than a fantastic tale about a wicked wizard. I'm the head, said Margaret. You can't boss me around. I'm the inspector, said Henry. I can boss everyone around. Wrong, Henry, said Margaret, because I am the chief school inspector and I am inspecting you. Oh, no, you're not, said Henry. Oh, yes, I am, said Margaret. An inspector can't be a head and a teacher, so there, said Henry. Oh, yes, I can, said Margaret. No, you can't, because I'm the king, and I send you to the tower, shrieked King Henry the Horrible. I'm the empress, screamed Margaret. Go to jail. I'm the king of the universe, and I send you to the snake pit, shrieked Henry. I'm the queen of the universe, and I'm going to chop off your head. Not if I chop off yours first, shrieked the king, yanking on the queen's hair. The queen screamed and kicked the king. The king screamed and kicked the king. Mum! screamed Margaret. Margaret's mother rushed into the, into the secret club tent. What's wrong with my little snuggle chops, said Margaret's mum. 
Henry's not playing my game, said Margaret, and, and he kicked me. She kicked me first, said Henry. If you children can't play nicely, I'll have to send you all home, said Margaret's mother severely. No, said Peter. Send him home? Yes, Henry would make Margaret ski scream until the walls fell down. He would tell Margaret's mum her house smelled of poo. He would, he could. But if Henry was sent home for being horrid, mum and dad would be furious. There'd be no pizza and bowling party for sure. Unless, unless it was risky, it was dangerous, it could go horribly, horribly wrong, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Need a drink, said Henry, and ran out of the tent before Margaret could stop him. Henry went into the kitchen to find Margaret's mum. I'm worried about Margaret. I think she's getting sick, said Henry. Muffin, gasped Margaret's mum. She's been very strange, said Henry, sadly. She said she's the queen of the world and she would cut off my head. Margaret would never say such a thing, said her mum. She always plays beautifully. I've never seen a child so good at sharing. Horrid Henry nodded. I know, it must be, because she's sick. Maybe she caught something from Peter. Has it Peter been ill? said Margaret's mum. She looked pale. Oh yeah, lied Henry. He's been throwing up and, um, well, it's been awful, but I'm sure he's not very contagious. Throwing up, said Margaret's mum weakly. And diarrhoea, said Henry. Loads and loads. Margaret's mother looked ashen. Diarrhoea? But he's much better now, said Henry. He's only run to the loo five times since we've been here. Margaret's mother looked faint. My little Margaret is so delicate, I can't risk, she gasped. I think you and Peter had better go home straight away. Margaret, Margaret, come in at once, she shouted. Horrid Henry did not wait to be told twice. School was out. Oh, thought Horrid Henry happily, reaching for the TV clicker. This was the life. Margaret had been sent to bed. He and Peter had been sent home. There was enough time to watch Marvin the Maniac and the Terminator Gladiator before Dave's party. I can't help it that Margaret wasn't feeling well, Mum, said Horrid Henry. I just hope I haven't caught anything from her. Honestly, Mum was so selfish. <laughs>